Hello, beautiful people. Good afternoon. Once again, here I am. See how the Holy Spirit brought me back? Here I am. I'm surprising myself here. But glory to God, it is another day that the Lord has made, and here we are again. We're still standing, aren't we? Now, it's it's a miracle that I'm here, actually, because my internet has been acting up for the past few days, and I was unable to deliver that live, but that's not going to stop the word from coming through. And if it has to come through an audio, then so be it. So be it, says God. We're going to we're going to keep talking about what we left off. I had a few more things to say to you, but that phone went dead, and and so the spirit brought me back. He says, "Finish what you started." For those of you who are um, business people, entrepreneurs, finish what you start, says the Lord. Finish it. Finish it. Doesn't matter how long it takes you, but finish it. <laughs> so we were talking about. Well, for those of you who um, are listening for the first time, welcome. My name is Grace. I am a spiritual coach, mentor, and spiritual godmother. Glory to God. And I just want to thank you for tuning in, for for listening, um, and. Uh, I invite you to perk up those spiritual ears to receive what the Spirit has to say today. The Spirit's always talking. All you got to do is listen. Listen. Glory to God. And Spirit has been talking a lot lately. And I've been listening. (laughs) <laughs> and he says, the darkness is over. The dark days are over. What's coming through is a wave of new disciples. No longer disciples of darkness, but disciples of the light. Disciples of the light, we covered last talk, who is the light of the world. Jesus, we are disciples of the light of the world. But Jesus also called us the light of the world. He called us the salt of the earth. Glory to God. And so we have to learn how to uh, walk in the power of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, so that we learn how to become more and more. We, we get rid of the darkness that is within us because, you know, there is a lot of living in this world because we, were, we came into this world. We ha- we, there, there's, still, there's still darkness that the Lord says that we, we have to dig deep into ourselves and we've got to get rid of it because if we don't get rid of it, that we cannot uh, f- fulfill entirely our um, our purpose as light workers, our purpose as disciples of the light, as as um, as children of the light. Glory to God! And um, and you'll forgive any interruptions as these start coming in because I, I think I have company right now. But we're not gonna. Isn't that a you know that is not a coincidence <laughs> that things start happening like that once you get on and you start talking about the things of God. There's things that start surging here and there. We're not, we're not going to allow that to happen here. We need this word to get out. So lately, the spirit's been speaking about you got to get in. You got to, you got to get in there, and you have to dig deep, and you have to allow him to, to really search you, search the innermost parts of your being, of your spirit, man, to get rid of anything that does not look like our. Heavenly Father of lights. For if we are to be a light in this world, a true, bright, and shining light, we must 
be willing, as we said before, to have our ego shattered. We must be willing to be, sh be shattered, be shattered on the rock that is Jesus Christ. Glory to God. So if you are willing to allow the spirit to break you, to break you completely, to break that old vase, that old vessel. This morning I was in the book of, I was in the book of Joshua. Lord really has me in the book of Joshua. He's saying, if you read no other book right now, Grace, you need to be in the book of Joshua. You are the Joshua generation, and you have to speak to the Joshua generation. Glory to God. And so he took me to chapter 9 of the book of Joshua, where uh, both Joshua and all the Israelites are fooled by the, um, oh, the, uh, the really slick, <laughs> those really slick, um, um, inhabitants of Gibeon and uh, and and how they took it that they could upon them themselves it says old shoes old garments and they just made themselves look like they were on the brink of death and really they were right next door and they they lied to Joshua and the Israelites and said that they had come from a faraway land and the spirit says those old garments how many of you have lived with old garments for a very long time you've been dwelling in old tattered garments you've been like these um like the uh, like the uh, the the hivites you've been just like them you've been walking around with your old shoes you've been walking around with those old garments you <laughs> Even your food is dry and moldy, says the Lord. Okay, oh, the Spirit's speaking right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, so food that's dry and moldy, says the Spirit. A lot of you are still caught up in religion. A lot of you are still caught up in religion, and your food, your provisions have gone dry and moldy, just like the Hivites. Your provision, dry and moldy. And you've been trying to give out, give out this provision to others, says the Spirit, you've been trying to, to, to do your part as you have been asked in religion to do, as you have been asked to do, the, to follow the, the rules and the regulations, to, to live up to the standards of the, of the religious system, of the religious order, says the Spirit. And you, you are trying. You are trying. And, and God bless you, beloved. Those of you who are still caught up in the confines of religion, you are still trying. You're still pushing the rock up the hill. But what you've got in your pockets, listen what the Spirit is saying. What you've got, the bread that you have in your bags, your old sacks, your old wine bottles, the, 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 the wine that you have in your old wine bottles is, is old, and the bread that you have in your sacks is dry and moldy. And you've been trying to hand out this dry bread, this moldy old bread to your children. Catch this in the spirit, beloved. You've been trying to hand out what you've learned in religion. You've been trying to give it to your children because you are trying to, you are trying to follow God. You have been trying to, to, to follow the Lord, to please the Lord by handing out the bread that you have in your sacks, by giving out the wine you have in your old wine bottles, old wine. But it's gone dry and moldy, says the Lord. And what you are doing instead of handing out fresh provision, just as Jesus did, he handed out the fresh provision to the 5,000. Just as, just as what you've been doing, instead of, if, instead of nourishing, you, you have been poisoning and starving your own and yourself. Religion will only take you so far, beloved. Religion only takes us so far. And I'm not talking about the church. We are the church. As I stand here in my little studio, I am the church. You are the church. Glory to God. As my coach said, I am having church right now, this afternoon, 
Thursday, June 16th of 2022 in this tiny studio of mine. Glory to God. We are the church. We're not talking about the church. Some people are so apt to think that when I say religion, I mean I'm trying to destroy the church of Christ. Oh, no, I'm trying to upbuild this thing. I'm trying to build it up from the bottom up. Glory to God. Just as Peter. See, you thought it was only Peter. You're supposed to be a rock too. Glory to God. I, I think we get con- the things confused in the Holy Bible is that we read the Bible from a perspective where we, we're looking on the sidelines and, and we're going, well, that doesn't apply to me. I'm not that person. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. It applies to you too. You are counted. You are counted as one of them in the inheritance of Jesus, in the inheritance of Christ. If you bear that name on you, Jesus, then you are just like the men and women in the Bible. Of course, our battles are more spiritual. But there are, there are battles that, that look more physical than spiritual. But first, before a battle can even manifest into the, to the physical, says the spirit, it occurs in the spiritual. That's the root of it, beloved. And so please don't misunderstand me. When I speak of religion, I am not saying get out of the church you're going to. Like I said in the previous talk, if what you are receiving in church right now is nourishing you, if you truly feel, and you are honest with yourself, if you feel this is nourishing your spirit, by all means continue until you hit the wall and you realize that you are hungry for meat. Not all churches are giving out milk that is diluted. Do not misunderstand me. But the vast majority of churches, they're not getting into the meat. What is the meat? The word of God. They're not getting into the meat. They're all about the worship. And there's nothing wrong with worship. Worship the Lord, especially in your adversity, says the Lord. Worship me in your adversity. Worship me when things are going haywire. Don't come to me and only worship me when things are are, are kumbaya. Come to me in your adversity and praise me. Glory to God. So if you find that church right now is still, it, it's still giving you what you need, if you're, a, if you're a babe in Christ and you are learning and growing, by all means, continue. But there's a roaring lion inside each and every one of you who has received Jesus. There is a roaring lion within each and every one of us. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Perhaps right now it's a cub. It's still purring. But the time comes where it starts to roar and it wants meat. Glory to God. And you know why we have to unleash this lion? Because there is a lion, a prowling lion, around our brothers and sisters, around us, that is seeking to kill, to steal, and to devour the church. That's why it's important. Get into the milk, but when that milk starts tasting sour, when it's not enough, when your stomach is still growling, when your palate is saying, this isn't for me anymore, get into the meat. And that's when you start getting ambitious about war. See, we are warriors. Christians are not supposed to sit in the pew simply and hear. Yes, faith cometh by hearing, but there must be works. Show me your works, beloved. We are warriors. When we go into that Holy Bible, we're warriors in training. That sword, we're supposed to know how to wield it. And wield it better than our own enemy. Oh, and it's possible, beloved, for Jesus did it. And we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. If Jesus, if he defeated the enemy with the word, then all things are possible with God. So can we. I feel like one of the musketeers. (laughs) Glory to God. Oh, beloved. To become the disciples of light. To really shed our light, to really spread. See, it's one thing to shine your light. We got to spread this light. You know, when I was a kid, when I was a, a kid and when I was an agnostic, 
there was um, there was a, a time where I went through the vampire craze, um, and I wasn't as crazy over over the Twilight vampires as I was about Anne Rice's vampires, particularly Lestat. And so at the time, I used to watch ooh, the, the the films, and there was this song in one of one of those uh, vampire movies, the vampire vampire movie with Aaliyah, and there was one song by the band Static X. Some of you may recall it, and I'm going to use it as an because because this really fired me up when the Holy Spirit brought it to my to my remembrance. I'd forgotten about the song, but one one day as I was the more and more I was getting into talks about the kingdom of heaven and about us being the light of the world, the Spirit brought brought me back to my days when I was a disciple of darkness, admirer of vampires and vampiric culture and all of that. <clears throat> the Spirit brought me back to that. He said, do you remember? Do you remember when you were, when you were into that? Well, I need you to go back and I need you to revise this, this one little thing here. And when he took me back to that one song by Static X, it's called Cold, this song glamorizes evil. It glamorizes uh, evil and uh, maliciousness. And you'll excuse my dogs. Um, it's, a, it's a busy afternoon here. So the song here, we're going to look at some of the lyrics here. It's important because the, hence the title of this, this talk. It says, We Kiss the Stars. We writhe, right, just like words. We writhe, we are, your name, desire, your flesh, we are. And then it goes into the chorus, cold, we are so cold, we are so cold, we are so cold. It continues, continues, and then it just keeps going into, into more lyrics. But right there, those top ones right there, uh, very reminiscent of what narcissists do. They desire us. They desire our flesh, the desire to destroy us. Now, make no mistake, it is a spirit operating through the narcissist. Spirits, spirit operating through the narcissist. The narcissistic spirit is the Je Jezebelic spirit. There's other Noachian spirits driving the narcissist culture, believe it or not. But when the spirit brought me back to this song, he wanted to show me something, something very powerful. But first, I need to tell you something. Beloved, receive these words. I need you, I need you to listen very closely. And if you've heard this, these words before so many times, I need you to receive these words today as if they are happening right now. If you've, if you've heard them before and you've heard them so many times in the churches, but this time I need you to hear it. I need you to take it into your spirit and into your bone marrow. Greater is he that is in us. Greater is he that dwells in us than he that is in the world. That's just to preface this. The Spirit says, that song is like an anthem for evil, for evil doers. We're cold. Okay, says the Lord. Whoever... Whoever likes to live by these sorts of this sort of mantra, this this, this sort of um, motto, they've taken their side. They're cold. What did Jesus say in Revelation? You're either hot or you're cold. Because if you're warm, I will surely vomit you out of my mouth. This is listen, beloved, chosen ones of the. Of the Most High, glory to God. This isn't the time to be warm. The time for lukewarmness in my church, says the Lord, is done. It is over. The dark days, the dark ages are over. I need light workers. I need disciples of the light. I need salt. I need light. I need heat. I need fire. 
I don't need cold. But if you're going to be cold, take the other side. Go to the left. If you're going to be cold, if that's what you've decided, because I've given you a free will, and if that is what you have chosen, so be it. Go to be cold. Go ride in the cold. But if you are of me, says the Lord, you will come to the right. You will stand on my right side. And you will be hot. And you will be burning hot for the kingdom. Burning hot for souls. You see how the cold is also burning hot for souls and flesh? It says, the song says, your, it says we de- desire your flesh. You see, the enemy, desi- the adversary desires your flesh. That is where he attacks you, beloved, in your flesh to get to your spirit. And that is exactly what the narcissistic spirit does. It attacks your flesh. It attacks your mind to get into your spirit, to transform you into a worker of darkness. And how does it happen? I know it began to happen to me, but the spirit said, no, 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 no. You can't become one of them. The, the, the anger, the rage, the fury, the bitterness, it started to corrode me, beloved. I was feeling it. I was becoming that thing that I did not want to become. But I could feel it like taking over me. Have you ever felt that before? But then there comes a point where the spirit says, he said, he halts this process, <laughs> this, this corroding process. He says, no, this isn't what you came for. This isn't why you were appointed. This isn't why you came to earth to become one of them, a militia of evil. No, sir. No, ma'am. Oh, and you know what? It, it, let me tell you something about, about the, the process of, of, uh, of, um, um, of degradation. That's what it is, the process of degradation. The process of degradation is easier than the process of renovation in the Holy Ghost. It's so easy that after the narcissist hurts us so many times, we, we, we want to take revenge. We want to become even, oh, glory to God, because by the grace of God, I am not on that side. By the grace of the living Almighty God. Thank you, Father. The process of degradation it's so much easier, isn't it? You, it's so much easier to, to, to soil yourself in your own bitterness, to, to dwell in it, to sink in it, to just sit there and allow it to eat you up from the inside out. It's so much, it's so much easier to be mean, cruel, than to be kind and considerate and serviceable. It's so much easier to take and take and take and take than to give, isn't it? And that's the narcissist. They take. They never give. They give you breadcrumbs, but they make sure that they don't empty themselves out. But somehow we do, don't we? We do empty, empty ourselves out. We, we keep on giving and giving and giving and giving. You see already, you right there, the Spirit is saying, that because you are of your Father. Because that's what, that's what you do. You give. But then you give so much. You've given so much your entire life is that when the narcissist comes to you and, 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 and begins to, to, to destroy you, you get sick and you go no more. I'm not giving anything to anybody anymore. And somehow you begin to kind of live by these words, the words in this song, the lyrics in this song. Cold. Cold. I was I was cold. A friend one time when I when I you see the enemy's always working and I was so bitter, angry, hurt that I tried to recruit a friend who had also been heartbroken, had a heartbroken by, by someone. I tried to recruit her. You believe it? (laughs) 
feel like the Apostle Paul here. You go from one side to the other. Glory to God. I tried to recruit her. I was so angry. I, I tried to get my girlfriend to to join me in this vendetta against not against men. Yes, believe it or not, I was one of those man hating feminists. Not too man hating, but close. And I tried to get her to join me and get this. Lord, please forgive me. She was a little younger than I was. You see how that works? Oh, but the Holy Spirit, he had other plans. And he used her. He used her to tell me this. Don't become the thing that you hate. I'll never forget that day when she said those words to me. She refused to fall. She refused to take the call. <laughs> but it was the Holy Ghost calling out to me. See, he will use anybody, beloved. Do not underestimate a single person that you run into. I don't care who it is. God will use anybody to talk some sense into you. When you are a child of his, he will not allow you to join the other side. You still have, you still have options. You can still make the choice. But see, there's something so powerful in you that he's placed in there. That he doesn't want that to go to the kingdom of darkness. It's potent. Just like Paul the Apostle. He was working for the kingdom of darkness until Jesus intercepted. that trip where he was about to go destroy more of the church. And who did Paul become in the Holy Ghost? The uplifter of the church. He was like a godfather to the children of the Lord. Glory to God, for he never had children of his own. You see, you could be working for the kingdom of darkness for so long, but if you are a child of the Lord, if you are a child of light, he will pull you out of there. Like he pulled Paul out of there. And if he has to blind you, he will. He's going to get you out of there because you have no place in the darkness. You have no place in the evil. Glory to God. And so in this season, the Lord is saying, I don't want you, I, I don't want you lukewarm. You're either hot or you're cold. Hotter gets hotter, says the Lord. Cold gets colder. Which are you? Examine yourselves. For as disciples of the light, we are not here to simply shine our light here in our house. See, we are supposed to be light workers 24-7. To anybody that we speak, to whether it's our family, our siblings, co-workers, strangers on the street, we are supposed to be shining that light and spreading that light 24-7. That light needs to be like gunpowder, says the Lord. This is war. But see, we don't fight the battles with, with um, we don't fight against flesh and blood, do we? So our weapons are not material. Just like our armor is not material. It is spiritual. This is why, beloved, even though we have been deeply hurt by the narcissists, we've got to learn how to separate the narcissist from the spirits that oppress and possess the narcissist. Because if we don't, look, what I was doing, I didn't know that I needed to separate the narcissist from the spirits. And you know what the thing is that the Spirit was saying to me yesterday? You know, the narcissist tells you who he's, who, whose side he's on, she's on. They tell you from, they tell us from the very beginning. They, if, if they don't, if they don't directly tell us, they indirectly show us. Don't they? Recall it. Recall it, says the Lord. Remember how many times what they said, what they did, it indicated they were, they were not good people. 
We wanted them to be good people. We wanted to save their souls, did we not? They made us feel like they're saviors too. Or, some of you may have seen the narcissist as your savior because of that false light. They brightly shine, false though it may be. Separate the man from the spirit, says the Lord. Glory to God. Isn't isn't that what our Holy Bible does? It separates. It's a sword. It pierces. It separates the flesh from the spirit. And this is why it hurts. You don't want to let go of the fleshly things. Oh, but when the Holy Spirit plants new desires, he grows new desires in your spirit, in your heart, then you're willing to let go. And just like Paul, you cry out, Lord, take this away from me. Take this thorn out of my flesh. Sometimes the Lord will say, no, I need you to keep that thorn in your flesh. That's what he said to me. I've cried out to him. I said, Lord, take this thorn out of my flesh. And he says, no, I need you to keep it for the sake of souls, for the sake of others. I need you to keep it. Beloved, if I had not gone through my own, my own, my own hell of, of, of narcissistic abuse, I wouldn't be able to stand here right now. The Lord has taught me how to turn my pain into purpose. Turn your pain into purpose, beloved. You don't know what your purpose is. Look for it through your pain. So you cry out to the Lord, take this flesh out of take this thorn out of my flesh. I don't want it anymore. And when you go into the Word of God, the Word of God is dividing that, that flesh, flesh from spirit. Just like that, says the Lord, I need you to pay close attention. Now when somebody does something to you, listen, because this doesn't apply to the entire world. We are not of this world. But when it applies to the elect, when it applies to a chosen one, see, chosen ones have a huge responsibility on their shoulders. Chosen ones, I I don't know what what you've heard, but chosen ones isn't isn't a a walk in the park. There's a lot of talk of chosen ones, by the way, a lot of talk of chosen ones on on social media. And let me tell you something. How can you differentiate a, a, a false chosen one from a true chosen one of the Lord? The sufferings. The chosen one has to suffer. Yes, while chosen ones are part of some, some, some heavenly elite, this doesn't make you any better. You didn't choose yourself. You will go through the storms. You will go through the tribulations. And you will suffer. Just as your king suffered. And that's what differentiates a real chosen one, says the Lord, from a false chosen one. How willing are you to suffer for Christ? How willing are you to suffer for the kingdom of heaven? Some people don't want to suffer. Some people would rather have it all be rainbows, unicorns, cotton candy. No suffering. But some people, they say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for the storms. Because I know who is my rock. I know who is my refuge. I know who is my fortress. I know that if the storm hits, I just have to find my refuge. I just have to hold on tight. And I'm an eagle. So the Lord has given me Eagle's wings, glory to God. So when the storm comes, I use it to go even higher, to fly even higher in the spirit. That's the chosen one. The chosen one will suffer. 
We share in the inheritance of Christ. So the enemy has his army, his militia, and God, God is raising up dry bones this season. Where those narcissists tossed you, you won't stay there for long, says the Lord. If I have anything to say about it, if you are my child, you will not stay there for too long. Don't get comfortable. And what he means by that is, don't get comfortable, start doing the work. Some people, they get tossed in the dirt and they get comfortable in their bitterness and their hatred and their anger. That was, that was who I was becoming. And then the Lord at some point said, this is your elevation season. Start doing the work. It's like he shows up all of a sudden and he says, let's go. And you're like, what? What? I, I, I thought I was a nothing and a nobody. I thought I was just supposed to stay here. And, you know, I don't know what you, I don't know what they told you, says the Lord, but they told you wrong. You heard it wrong. You have no business in the dirt. You have no business in the ground. You have no business in those murky waters where they drowned you. The Lord will dry up those waters. He's done it before. He'll do it again and again and again. So separate, says the Lord. Separate the narcissist from the spirits, the, dem the demons oppressing, possessing the narcissist. Because if you don't, you will fall into the trap. What's the trap? The trap here is to hate. The trap here is to belittle, to scorn, to revile, to throw out. The very, even the narcissist. See, no, the reason that narcissists can't easily find a cure is because they simply don't want to. They have the same free will that everyone does. They've chosen for now. They've chosen to, 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 to side with darkness, side with hurting others, side with, with hurting instead of healing side with the dark instead of the light. They've chosen to stew in their own bitterness, brokenness, self-loathing. The chosen one does not. Sign, uh, also, that's another sign of being a chosen one. You refuse to lay there. Even when you're there stewing in it, when the Lord shows up, he says, get up. But even as you were stewing there, there was still uh, like a tug of war going on inside of you. Saying, should I stay here or should I go? But then you don't know how to get out of it. Because you're so full of the bitterness and the unforgiveness towards these, these, these people. Person who's done you so much hurt on purpose and that's the part that hurts doesn't it well you realize they did this on purpose they knew what they were doing to me because at first we were trying to make up all these excuses for them we were trying to justify them they were hurt when they were children they we, we try to justify them right and, and oh they were abused when they were children they were overindulged or they weren't indulged enough they lacked attention and love. I'll be the one to give it to them. I'm, I'm like their savior. I still see something good in them. I'm going to stay when everyone's telling you to leave them. So you, you, you continue, when you start to realize, however, that they were doing this on purpose. The more you get educated, the more you go in and you read the books and you listen to those podcasts and you watch the YouTube videos, you start to realize, wait a minute, they did this to me on purpose. They manipulated me on purpose. 
that's where it starts to get ugly, doesn't it? That's where you start to feel the rage, the, the, the bubbling rage. They, they hurt me on purpose. They laughed behind my back. They were doing this to hurt me. Oh, oh no, 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 says the spirit, no. See, I need you to remember something. I need you to go back all the way to the love bombing stage. The mask slipped more than once to reveal the demon behind it. You were so caught up in your ego, you didn't see it. Some of you were so caught up in your ego, you didn't see it. You were so caught up in the wave of flattery, you didn't notice it. That was me, beloved. Oh, but that demon revealed itself to you. The mask slipped more than once. That's what I'll tell you. The narcissist. They reveal who they are from the very beginning. They show it to you. They, 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 they say things and do things that at, at something within you says, that was weird. That was awkward. Strange. But then you brush it off. You brush off the red flag of the demonic entity controlling them. Things start to get worse and worse and worse. And by that time, you've dug a hole for yourself. They show us who they are. Cold. Unsentimental. Unfeeling. Bearing no empathy. Notice how they treat the waiter or the waitress. Notice how they treat their parents, how they talk about their parents, their mother, their father. Notice streaks of envy in them when they talk about somebody who they perceive to be more successful or better than them. Take note of those things. Some of you are still dealing with them. This is war. But you need to learn to differentiate the man from the spirit. Otherwise, you'll fall into the same trap. You will, you will, you will be enraged towards them. You will try to find vengeance to get revenge on them. And that's not what, that's not it, says the Lord. That's why I need you to separate man from spirit, man from demon. I don't need you to hate the man, says the Lord. I need you to have compassion for him the way Jesus had compassion for the Gadarene man and cast out legion from that Gadarene man. I need you to feel compassion for the man, no matter how much, or the woman, no matter how much they hurt you on purpose. Know that they are broken down houses where demons have come in to steal, kill, and destroy or they have set up shop. Their walls have been torn down by, by I don't know, maybe ch child abuse. Who, it, it, you know, at this point, it doesn't even matter because this is the way, this is how we justify it. No, we're not supposed to justify it. But we're not supposed to coddle evil either or support it or endorse it, or enable it. And that's why the Spirit brought me back to this song. This song enables more evil. And there's many songs like this. I used to be, um, I used to be into a lot of heavy metal back, back in the day, thrash metal, heavy metal. And I notice now, looking back, I don't listen to the songs anymore, but the, sometimes the Spirit will remind me, he'll say, remember that? Remember that? Yeah, they were, they, they, were, they were telling you exactly what was going on. See, you got to be careful what you're listening to. It becomes a mantra. The music is meant to be replayed, right? You listen to one song, and if it's a very catchy song, you know you're going to go back there and play it again. Or somehow it'll, it'll 
it'll force itself. I mean, if you're at a store and you're hearing the song over and over, you take a lift, the driver's playing a song, that song starts playing over and over in your head, and then you go, oh, I need to go look up the lyrics of that song. I, I need to go listen to that song again. Songs are meant to be repeated. And that, chor that, that chorus right there is effective. So what you're listening to does have an effect on you because it comes in repetition. We, we repeat the things that we like. We, we repeat the foods. We, we eat them all over again, the foods that we enjoy, the movies that we watch, the ones that we like, we rewatch them. The songs, the, the books, we reread the books. We re-listen to podcasts. To we we re-watch YouTube videos. We read a lot, right? Read this, read that. So remember, says the spirit, because you put it in you, and it's in there. It's still in there. But now I need you. I, I need you to use this for the kingdom of, of light and listen to what the spirit said to me. Going back to what we spoke about on Tuesday. How the Lord has shut the faucets. That's where, that's where I believe the, the, the audio cut off. Well, let's, let's pick up on this. He shut the faucets of creativity. You see, he can do that. He's the almighty creator. He is the originator of creativity. You wouldn't be a creative were it not for the fact that you have divine DNA, his DNA in you. So honestly, if you are looking to be more creative... Ask the Spirit. Don't be shy. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you ideas for businesses. It's ready, says the Lord. It's ready for you. I'm ready to unleash those blessings on you. You just got to start building this house for the kingdom of heaven. To advance the kingdom of heaven on earth. You shouldn't be sitting there twitching, just twiddling your thumbs waiting for Jesus to return. He's, he's, he's returning. But you know how a lot of people are like, oh, Jesus is coming back soon. And they're not doing a single thing to advance his kingdom. That's not a chosen one. A chosen one is not a conformist. A chosen one says, oh, Jesus is returning. The king's returning. Oh, Hosanna. Let's, we're going to roll out the red carpet. We are going to prepare this earth for him to return. Glory to God. Beloved, he's our king. He's not a figment of our imagination. He is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. What are we doing? Our time is limited. If you go back into the Old Testament and you see how Joshua was just, it was 24-7, advancing, advancing the kingdom of the Lord. Taking Jericho first. Actually, no. It began in Egypt when the Lord took down Pharaoh. And then when they head on to Jericho, that's when the real battles start. Those are... Desert time was preparation time. Their hearts weren't ready. They were, they were still caught up in a slave mentality. See, this is why we got to renew our minds. Chosen ones renew their minds. They don't get caught up in the slave mentality. They don't get caught up in the he said, she said. They don't get caught up in the politics of this dying world. They don't get caught up in, 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 in doctrines and in um, denominations. They understand there is one body, there is one head, there is one constitution of the kingdom of heaven, there is one spirit, there is one Lord, there is one king, there is one God. They don't get caught up in the technicalities. They, get, they see the big picture. The Spirit will show you the big picture. This is why you cannot stew in your bitterness towards the narcissist. There's no time for that. Whatever you need to do, do it now. Seek out help. Seek out a counselor. Seek out a psychologist, a life coach, a therapist. Whoever you need to get to where the Lord needs you to be. You're in the valley. Start seeking help. 
Start doing the internal work. You can't stay there forever, says the Lord. I can't use you in my kingdom. How can you help the broken, the needy, and the, and the hungry if you're broken yourself, if you're broke mentality yourself? How can you speak of abundance and prosperity if you have a broke mentality? My children are not poor, says the Lord. My children are rich, prosperous, abundant. We are surrounded by the lavish abundance of the Lord every day. It's like I heard a saying, I forgot who said it. I, when we change the way we look at things, the, thing get, the things that we look at will change. Put that on your, I have that on my bathroom mirror on a little post-it. You might want to do that. Put it up there. Remind yourself every day. And, be, and, 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 make, and make practice gratitude more every day. Make it your bread and butter to practice gratitude every single day. Take five minutes out of your day. Simply sit in meditation of gratitude. Gratitude for everything that you have. For everything that God has given you. The bounty. The plentiful bounty. Life itself. Your health. Whatever it is that you're grateful for. That's, that's, that's changing your mindset. That's elevation. That's, that's uh, renewing your mind. Takes five minutes. Put in a little bit every every day, a little extra. And if you want to go for five, ten minutes, do it ten minutes. Some people meditate for an hour. Surely you can take five minutes of every day to practice gratitude. The chosen one is grateful. Ever grateful. Ever thankful. That's why you get you cannot you cannot. Stay behind. See, narcissistic people, they stay behind in a circle, in a toxic circle. They do it all over again. That's why they learn how to hone the skill of manipulation. Of everything it is that they do that they're so good at. So subtle at. Why? Because they, they practice it on so many people. They become better and better and better at it. It, that's why you, you're when you started watching those videos and, and, and listening to the audios, you were like, wait a minute. It sounds like they work out of a manual or something. Uh, they do. They do. Manual of evil, says the spirit. It is evil because they are feet that run to do evil. Our feet. The feet of the chosen one. And give glory to God, you've got two feet. If you've got two feet, give glory to God. Your feet are powerful. The feet of the chosen one are powerful. Not because of, not because of your own might and your own power. But because of the anointing, the unction that is upon you. So when you walk, oh, glory to God. The power that you are unleashing, if you choose to walk in the Spirit, you will unleash the power. Glory to God. Learn to work with what you're given. You have been given the power from on high. Some people don't have much, and they work with what they have, and, and, and they become a success at it. How is it that my people, says the Lord, who have been, have received the unction, who I have, I've, I've anointed them, are still caught up in a slave mentality, in a slave mindset? You think it's about color and race? Oh, no. See, those are distractions the enemy, the adversary uses to get your eyes off of the big picture kingdom. It's kingdom. It's not race. It's not Democrat or Republican. It's not pre or pan.
It's not color. Ethnicities. It's about kingdom. And the enemy uses all these other silly little things to distract you. To get your mind on the things of man instead of the things of the kingdom. To get your mind on childish things rather than childlike things of the Lord. There's a, there's, there's a difference between childlike and childish. These things right here on earth, the, the, all of this... Uh, politics and, and race and, and racism and, and all of this, it is childish. Kids still playing on the playground. Are you ready to jo- <laughs> Are you ready to put on your big boy, big girl pants and join the big boys? Or are you going to stay on the porch like, the, like a little dog just barking because you can't go out with the big dogs? Because you're still too caught up in your mind thinking that this is, this is, about, this is about skin color and race, ethnicity, cultures, and, and politics. Please. We have much bigger, bigger, bigger fish to fry and worry about those things. And I say it because I was the one worried about those things. For a while, I was worried about those. All those silly little childish things. And I I tell you why they're childish. Because they ruin Thanksgiving dinners. Because they ruin Christmas events. Where people should be, oh, I don't know, practicing goodwill towards men. And instead you sit at a Thanksgiving table and you've got a big turkey there. Instead of giving God, God thanks, there you are talking about Republican and Democrat. Ooh, that was me, beloved. That's why I can tell you. Wasted a lot of time on that. That was a waste of time. And then somebody gets up from the table because they're too upset. You said something that offended them. Or you get up because you're so offended by somebody else's point of view. Childish, says the Lord. I don't need childish. Childish doesn't work in the kingdom, says the Lord. Childlike does. (laughs) That's why the Lord used children. Isn't that interesting? We gotta learn. To, we gotta learn to differentiate this. There's a difference between childlike and childish. That's why the Lord said you need to be like a child, as in your mind, childlike faith, like a child's. This is how you tap into the kingdom of heaven. Faith, like a child. How many times the Spirit has brought me to Narnia? You remember C.S. Lewis? The lion, the witch, and the wardrobe, and all that stuff. You know, say 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 what you will about all of that. But the Spirit reminded me of, of, of this many times as I'm reading the Bible. He'll say, it's just, you know, those children, when they go into the wardrobe, they enter Narnia. When you, when you go into the Word of God, he says, you're entering the world of your Father. You know, and it's true that when you read a book, you are entering a whole different world. Well, when you read the Holy Bible, you've got 66 books right in front of you. Glory to God. It's powerful. When you stop kidding yourself and you go into the Holy Bible with with childlike eyes, and you're ready for the surprises, He will surprise you. Chosen ones are like children. And chosen ones are happy in the adversity. They glorify God. They praise the Lord in the adversity. They don't look for God only when they've, everything's going well for them, when everything is kumbaya. No, they search for God in the good and in the bad, and they search for God when they're up and when they're down. They don't just, they don't just look for God when they're missing things, when, when things are going haywire and they're like, oh God, why me? No, they're always worshiping. They're always praising the Lord. If you've got a piece of gum, you're like, thank you, Lord. Yeah, that's the chosen one. If you've got a grain, one grain of rice, you're like, Lord, thank you. For one grain of rice. 
God on the chosen one's mind is 24-7. He's 24-7. When the spirit has switched that switch and he's turned on that switch and he, that's when God is there. He's ever present in your mind, in your spirit, and he's speaking. Why? Because you have chosen, beloved, to be aligned. This wasn't forced on you. Yes, you were predestined for such a time as this. Like Esther was. Like Jesus was. Like David was. Like Joseph was. Like Daniel was. But you still make the choice to be aligned, to follow in his footsteps. In the Lord's footsteps. A disciple of the light. And so we make the choice. To get rid of all the gunk. That is still in us. You know we're not perfect. The narcissist. I'll tell you what the narcissist does too. The narcissist likes to put you on a pedestal at the beginning. Makes it out like you are this renaissance picture. Painting. Painting. They delude themselves, by the way. Nobody is perfect. Not even them. But they put you upon a pedestal. And then they, 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 and then they begin to devalue you. To desecrate the painting. They start with little jabs. And then they grab the knife. Don't they? And then there comes a point where they say, you're not, you're, you're, you're nothing special at all. I don't know what I was thinking. You're not perfect at all. And then they accuse you. They gaslight you. They, they, they make you believe that you were saying all along that you were perfect. Because you had God. Because you had a religion. Because you tried to, ner- they, you tried to care for your spirituality to manage it. And then at first they said they admired you for that. And then they later that they, they can't they can't deal with it because the demons on them can't deal with it. What's on them repels what's on you. They're disgusted by it, and therefore they must desecrate it. See how that works? But see, they they accuse you, they gaslight you. Try to get you to believe that all along you were the one who was saying you were perfect when you were not. Because a chosen one understands that this process lasts until we hit the ground. But this time our bodies as seeds to be planted into the earth. That's when the process ends. You have very little time. The process isn't Immediate. Oh, it's a process. But the narcissist will will gaslight you. They'll put you on the pedestal just to bring you down. Just to destroy you. Well, they try. You got to give them. You got to. They try. But see, they can't destroy you, beloved. Let me tell you why they can't destroy us. I'm speaking to the chosen ones. They can't destroy us because they can't destroy the light. Darkness cannot destroy the light. They can't destroy the light in us. No matter how hard they try. God laughs at how hard they try. That's why they keep coming back after the discard. They're not done with you. They see that you're doing well again. They're spying on your Facebook, on your Instagram. They're watching your YouTube channel. And they go, oh no. (laughs) I'm not done with her. I'm not done with him. Why? Because they see that the light is still shining. The Lord says, indestructible. For I am indestructible, says the Lord. And the light that I put in my child is indestructible, says the Lord. Inextinguishable, says the Lord. They tried. Oh, they tried. But we, let's, now let's go on to something else. The disciple of the light. 
must be willing to come into the light himself, says the Spirit. You must be willing to let the Lord examine your heart and pull out all the gunk that is not of him and like him. So he, 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 he plucks you out from among the weeds. See, he's a gardener. He always has been. Mary Magdalene. I think it's so cute. Mary Magdalene saw our Lord and she took him for a gardener. How funny is that? She, she thought it was the gardener speaking to her. He is the gardener. So he, he plucks you out from among the weeds. He, replay, he repots you in his house. I've been working with a, um, when my mother fell ill, and she's been, she's been ill for now, th- for three months now, and um, I've had to step up to the plate and just completely take over. And that means having to take care of all of her houseplants. And there is a begonia rex that was dying back in April. Wasn't growing anymore. And I repotted her and fertilized and glory to God. Now she's looking so beautiful. She's starting to really sprout. And the Spirit says, that's what I'm doing with you. That's what I'm doing with the chosen ones in this season. I plucked you out from among the weeds, from among the dead. From the evil. And I repotted you in the house of the Lord. Stay there. Don't go thinking that just because the narcissist comes knocking again that they suddenly see all your worth and value and they appreciate you. That's your ego, by the way. If you still think that, get that ego out of the way. Be willing to let that ego crash and burn. They don't come back for you. They come back to destroy what is still there. That little ember they see, they want it gone. That's how powerful you are. So you don't realize, beloved, how powerful the high-ranking soldiers you are in the spirit, says the Lord, that the narcissist will keep coming back. Insatiable, the narcissist is. Can't stand to see that you're happy now. Can't stand to see that you're successful now, that you're elevating, that you're growing, that you are taking over. We are taking over. That's why the Spirit brought me back to this song. He says, okay, look at that song. He says, now, when I, when I read the lyrics to this song by Static X, I got enraged. This is a good kind of anger, though. A holy kind of anger. Because I got angry that the fact that darkness was mocking me the entire time. Mocking you, mocking us. I got gotcha. you. The darkness said, you are not going anywhere. Isn't that what the narcissist said? You'll never find anyone like me again. When it was us, they will never find again. Oh, they're searching, believe me, you. They're searching for you in every person they meet. They're searching for you in every poem they read, in every book, in every novel they read, in every song they listen to. Oh, they're searching. They can't find you. Why? Well, because the Lord has shut that door that no man can open. They can't find you because you are so unique that in a million gazillion years, there will never be another one like you. Yes, you heard that right. No, I'm not tickling your ears. That's what the Spirit said to me. In a gazillion years, they will never find anyone like you again. This was their only chance they fumbled the ball with you. Oh, Butterfingers, that's not my fault. You fumbled the ball. And my God, which is not your God, right? The narcissist has another God. Usually it's them themselves, 
my God, which is not your God, has shut the door tight, bolted it. No man can open this door. And my God is opening up doors for me that no man can shut. Glory to God. Don't you just love our Heavenly Father? Revenge is mine, he says. Don't go looking for it. You get into your purpose. While you're in the dirt, I need you to work, says the Lord, just like Joseph did. Command the prison if you need to. But work. See, Joseph, he didn't just sit idly. Do you think that if Joseph had sat idly, it was Potiphar who noticed him. Do you think, do you honestly think Potiphar would have given him full, just made him his right hand, the lord of the house practically? Come on. No, Joseph was working. Why? Because his father works. His father works. Our father works, says Jesus. My father works, therefore I work. The Holy Spirit works. He's always working. Never sits idly. Fire doesn't sit idly. The, the Spirit is fire. The Chosen One is fire. But... Contain. You need to learn how to see this is why you got to learn how to contain your anger, Peters. <laughs> Some of you are Peters. Learn how to contain your anger. I, in fact, right now in this moment, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over each and every one of you, your bodies, your minds, your souls, your spirits, and to, I plead the blood of Jesus to cover your anger issues. Cover your anger issues. Cover your confusion. Cover your brokenness. Cover your fears, your fear of men. You can plead the blood of Jesus over your anger every day. If you struggle with anger, if you struggle with, with being um, impetuous and you have um, impulses, Plead the blood of Christ. The Spirit says, you're not, pleading this, you're not pleading the blood of Jesus enough. Every day, beloved, chosen ones. And so when I, when I, when I read the lyrics of the song, I felt... This indignation come over me, and and the spirit says, "Okay, contain yourself, because I need you to pay attention to what I'm what I'm saying here." Just like darkness, you know, it's it, it it's been it's been having a lot of fun on the playground for quite a long time. Says the spirit, "Well, that 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 time is coming to an end." Now it's the children of light. It's their turn. It is our turn to advance the kingdom of heaven on earth. So you know how the song says, cold, we are so cold. We are so cold. We are, the song says, we are. Okay, says the Spirit. Well, take that and use it for good. See, this is what the Lord does. Everything that the enemy intends for evil, the Lord uses it for our own good. Glory to God. He turns those fiery darts into fire for our spirits. The fiery darts of the enemy do us no harm, beloved, because the Lord turns them into fire to fire us up for the kingdom. Glory to God. Set us on fire, Lord. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Glory to God. We need to be on fire. I'm tired of this lukewarm mentality. I don't know about you, but I've been tired for a while now. There's no power. There's no breakthrough. There's no advancement. Still stuck on square one. 
I'm tired of playing chutes and ladders. I'm ready for chess. Glory to God. Do you remember when the narcissist was so fascinated by chess? Have you guys noticed that about narcissists? I may have to produce a, make a video on that on YouTube. The narcissist's obsession with chess. There's a reason behind that. Because something in them, listen, says the spirit, something deep beneath, deep inside that narcissist knows what game they're playing with you. Cat and mouse, yes, that too. That's, a, that's, that's also something, that, a game they're playing. But chess, where did I tell you the other, the, in the other talk? So this is a chess game of celestial proportions, heavenly proportions. And we fight against heavenly principalities, beloved. That's our battle. But when we met the narcissist, we weren't wearing our armor, were we? If we were, we had chinks in the armor. Chess. Because the demons know what they're playing. Chess of heavenly proportions. You might want to learn how to play chess. I'm ready for chess. I'm ready for bear. So Spirit says, take this, don't, don't, don't get too angry. Be angry, do not sin. Take this and apply it. Apply it to the kingdom of heaven. Just like they mock, they laugh, they say, we are the undead. We are hungry for flesh. See, those are demons speaking through the song, by the way. Maybe the song was, was composed for um, the, the film, for the vampire film. But what are vampires? but undead bodies, demons dwelling in dead bodies. That's all it is. You know, I used to be into Anne Rice. I used to like the uh, interview with the vampire. And um, when Anne Rice passed, when she passed away, and now that Stephen King has, re he has retired, let me tell you something about these people. They also, they, Stephen has a gift and Anne Rice had her gift. And they put their gift out there. Oh, they, they really worked with what they had. They put their gift out there. Michael Jackson put his gift out there. All of these people that we consider uh, kings and queens, uh, uh, you know, like the priests and priestess of, of I don't know, like uh, Rice would be considered the priestess of vampire, modern vampire literature, the high priestess. And then, um, Michael Jackson, King of Pop, all these people who, uh, you know, Elvis Presley, King of Rock and Roll. The Lord says, I don't know what any, I don't know what they told you, but you're supposed to be a king of, and queen in your own purpose, in your own gift. You're supposed to work that gift so much that it's supposed to outlive you the way it did to these people. Because I, because I assure you that for generations, they will be speaking of, they will be talking about Stephen King. They will be talking about Michael Jackson. They will also talk about Anne Rice. But I think Stephen King is a giant in the, in, the, in the modern day horror literature. But see, I was into Anne Rice, and when she passed away, the spirit said this, it's time. And I was, I was like, it's, I felt, it was sad to hear about her passing. And he said, she's left Listen, this is for all my writers out there. Listen very closely because I know a lot of you, you are not aspiring authors. Listen to me. You are successful authors. You are New York Times bestsellers. You just got to put the work in. Glory to God. And he said to me, she left a vacuum. I don't care who you are, beloved. When you die, you leave a vacuum. You're so, especially the chosen one, if you die without leaving us, without, without letting us get to know the real you, without putting your gift out there, you will, you'll, you're going to leave a vacuum. Okay? 
Think about that. She left a vacuum, says the spirit. But one thing he made me see was this. Mrs. Rice wrote her books. They were about, usually about vampires, about dark entities. And she wrote from a place, you know, even though she wrote about vampires, her writings were, um, they were coming from a real place. In fact, she said that all the stuff that she poured into her books, it was her. It was what she was feeling at the time. She would pour herself onto the page. Okay? And when I, when I heard that, and I, I thought about the tragedies that she had endured when she lost her little girl, And then just began to write those vampire novels. And then she was also a drinker. But the spirit says, I need you to be drunk in me when you're writing, not drunk in alcohol, okay? <laughs> if there's something even that Anne Rice left behind in one of her videos on her YouTube channel is, don't drink, all right? Be careful with that. Don't drink. And the spirit says, if you're going to be writing drunk like Hemingway, I need you to be writing drunk in me, says the spirit. Because you're writing, beloved. Let me tell you what the writing of the chosen one is. Oh, glory to God. It is powerful. The writings of the chosen one, the movies of the chosen one, the, 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 whatever it is that you're producing for the kingdom, wherever it is that God has called you to work your gift, beloved. Creating jewelry, makeup lines, whatever it is, beloved. Take it as it comes to you, as it resonates in your spirit. It's going to change the world. You're here to change the world and to advance the kingdom of heaven. See, Anne Rice, she probably didn't even know this. Because she had a faith in, in um, I think it was Catholicism. She probably didn't even know that what she was writing was advancing the kingdom of darkness. I don't know if Stephen King knows that. But look, to everyone there is a time, to everything there is a season and a time, and their time is up. As in the time of the advancers of the kingdom of darkness is up, says the Lord. It is up. It is done. Finito. It's over. I'm closing. I'm shutting the faucet, says the Lord. You can, you can, oh, I'm seeing in the, the spirit, the Lord is just shutting these faucets, all these faucets. They're done. That time is done. The time where the waters were, were, were the water that was turning out of there, it was murky, it was dark, it was depressing. That time right there, the emo time, all that time, it is done. It is over. The, all the, the, the gothicism, all of that, that stuff that was advancing somehow, some way, it was just advancing the kingdom of darkness because a little thread goes a long way, beloved. Don't underestimate what a power of one thread can do. Okay? So don't underestimate what one drop in the ocean can do. Don't underestimate your power, says the Lord. But he's shutting the faucets up. He closed the faucets. And that's where we had uh, left off when the audio went off. He closed those faucets. The Lord says, creativity comes from him, not the adversary. And the adversary and his followers want to honor the kingdom of darkness by using what God has given man to further to advance the kingdom of heaven on earth. Child by, like they say. Child by. Nuh-uh. You're going to use what I gave you to advance the kingdom of heaven on earth. For the needy, for the poor, for the hungry, for the starving. Glory to God. That's why you are needed. This is a call for an uprising. That's why your gifts are needed, beloved. And all of you are gifted. Don't argue with me. But see, if you don't know your gift, you got to go to the Lord and ask him to reveal the gifts that are meant for you. Father, reveal in this moment the gifts that are meant for them. In the name of Jesus. I can't wait to see what you all come up with, with what chosen ones are going to produce in this renaissance that's coming. 
So when she passed away, the Spirit said, that time is up. Those old actors, those old writers, authors, the ones who have contributed, whether they realize it or not, okay? It's not about, it's only about the big picture here. What have they produced? You are all producers, says the Lord. What have they produced to advance the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of darkness? Think about your favorite actors. Think about your favorite authors. Think about your favorite musicians, songwriters, singers. Where has their fruit gone to advance what kingdom? Think about all of those really famous uh, singers right now. Where are they working? Towards what kingdom are they working? Because there's only two. There's no gray area here. The enemy wants, you get, wants to get you caught up in the technicalities and the gray areas. So you get caught up just like the children of Israel did in the wilderness. And when the Pharaoh said, oh, they're caught now. They're in that wilderness now. Because that, that ocean's blocking them. Well, don't you know that my God can part the seas? So don't get caught up in that wilderness. Don't get caught up in the gray areas. You're either hot or cold. You cannot be lukewarm. The lukewarm times are done. They're over. Even our Jesus, the way that he is depicted in the book of Revelation, he has the vision that John sees, eyes of fire. He's on fire. We got to be on fire. Chosen ones are on fire. We are the children of the light. We are the ones who are advancing the kingdom of heaven. Time is up for the kingdom of darkness. There is a new wave. A new wave coming. And that's why all of these people who are passing away, who have contributed to nothing but the kingdom of darkness, who have advanced it somehow or some way. Okay, they use their gift for that purpose, but their time is up. When I heard that Stephen King retired, I went, okay, well, thank God. I used to be into some of Stephen King's stuff when I was a kid. I read Pet Cemetery, couldn't get up at night to get a glass of water. I saw The Shining at damaged me psychologically when I was a child. It was meant to. It was meant to hurt you. Those kinds of movies are meant to hurt you. You're looking for an adrenaline rush? How naive. See, some people, they, 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 they ask me, they go, well, why are you, why do you, do you really think everything is demonic? No. No, it's not about demonic. I think, I think even um, uh, blind people, can, even without seeing what's what's on, you know, all these movie, these uh, like um, like Netflix and stuff. Oh, geez, I'm getting, I'm getting a little. Um, even they can tell without even having to see that. Just hear the title. Oh, yeah, that. that. No, I'm, I'm. This isn't about demonic or not. This is about your spirit. This is about protecting your spirit. This isn't about being religious and going, well, I'm not going to watch this and I'm not going to listen to that because it's demonic. It's not about that. It's about caring enough about your spirit to protect it from the attacks of the enemy. It's not religion. It's kingdom. Everything we do is kingdom. Everything a chosen one does is kingdom. When you go out to buy your groceries, 
and you put away the carts when no one else is doing it. That's kingdom. When you pick up the clothes that fell off the racks because nobody else wants to do it, believe me, you, that's kingdom. When you choose to step away from uh, the table of gossip, that's kingdom. Everything you do, chosen ones, is kingdom. We have a high responsibility on our shoulders. And the paparazzi, just like, you know, royalty here on earth and the paparazzi are out to get them. Paparazzi are out to get us. Yes, chosen ones are in the eye of the public. I don't know what anyone else told you, but chosen ones are celebrities in the spirit. We are in the eye of the public. And in the eye of the spiritual realm. This is why narcissists are still seeking us out. More subtle than ever, because they know how to hone the skill. Why is it that we're not learning to hone the skills of our Father? Glory to God. Taking, going back to this song, it, when the Spirit said, this is what you do, you take this, you take it, you work it for the kingdom of heaven. And you tell others. You recruit light workers. You recruit the disciples of light. You recruit, just like Joshua, the warriors, the men of war, the women of war. We're not cold. We are coals. Glory to God. We're burning coals. You know how the song goes, cold, we are so cold. Cold. We're going to go... Coals, we're so coals because glory to God, we are. When we're on fire for the kingdom, we're on, we're on fire for Jesus, for our king. When we're on fire for souls, when we're on fire for light, for goodness, for goodwill toward men, see, oof, glory to God. See, the chosen one is peculiar because in this world, they'll tell you, What are you talking about? It's 2022, those are antiquated ideas, are they? The Bible is archaic. It's no longer in use for our times. Or useful. We are peculiar. We're oddballs and we always have been. Little wallflowers. Glory to God. We're the awkward ones. The ones who always stood out like a sore thumb. The ones that were laughed at, mocked. Because we didn't go out to the clubs. We didn't drink every weekend. And they said, they have no life. So-and-so has no life because, what, what, what is, is that a life? Is that really a life? To go out clubbing every weekend. Promiscuity. Drugs. STDs. See how the enemy gaslights you through the mouths of others? You're not doing this. And then they mock you. And they say, oh, you're like a little nun. For my ladies out there, for my queens. For my men, you also got it too. You got made fun of. My kings got made fun of too. Oh, they keep getting made fun of. Because it's harder to be a man in this world than it is to be a woman. But I need my kings to stand up and be brave. Be very brave and be very courageous just like Joshua. You will face hardships as a son of God. As a kingdom ambassador. But those hardships, those tribulations are going to thicken up your oil, your your anointing. It'll work for your good because you love and you fear your God. For my ladies out there, for my queens. I know there's a lot of Delilahs in your midst. 
and the Delilahs are causing a lot of confusion. Men think that you're just like all the Delilahs. When you meet a man, he, th he automatically assumes you'll be just like the other Delilah. If he ran into a Delilah. Well, the Lord says, I don't need you to tell them that you're not like the Delilahs. I need you to show them, which is harder still, to show them, to delay gratification unto yourself. My King's Act one goes for you to delay gratification. He's got you in a hiding place. You stay there. He's got you on Patmos, on the spiritual Patmos. You stay there. He's got you in a prison right now. You stay there. Don't go, like my mother used to say, don't go out searching for what you didn't lose. Don't go out looking for what you didn't lose. The enemy will gaslight you, will tell you, you know, it's the weekend. Why aren't you out clubbing and partying? Why aren't you having fun? Because that's, that, that's, that's, that's what they like to say, having fun or hanging out. I didn't even know what, the, I didn't even know what hanging out meant when I was younger. Someone came up to me and said, you want to hang out? And I said, sure. They thought I wanted to have sex with them. I didn't know the lingo. I didn't speak it. That's how naive I was. So if you're in the prison, stay there, says the Lord. I need you to work the prison. If you're in the cave, like David, stay there. I need you to work the cave and lead in the cave. How could you possibly lead in the palace before you lead in the cave? Learn to lead in the cave. Learn to lead in the prison. My queens, if you're waiting for the, the husband, or the kingdom spouse, as they say. Be careful with those prophetic words, by the way. There is an influx of that prophetic word of the kingdom spouse on YouTube especially. Be careful with that. It may not be your season to get married just yet. There's a lot of work that you need to do on yourself. You won't make my king suffer, says the Lord. If I send you a king, you will not make him suffer. Work on you. Glory to God. That means if, you have, if, you, if you're 40 right now and you need to work on yourself, and that kingdom, kingdom man isn't sent to you until you're 50, so be it. Because, beloved, beloved, this is why you must renew your mind. See, the enemy, love is a beautiful thing. It is, all right? It is, especially when it comes from the Lord, right? A lot of my, 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 my queens, they, they really like the story of Ruth. I can see why. I finally read it this past spring. Believe it or not, I heard it a lot when I was a child, but it never interested me to the point where I wanted to study it in the Bible. I'd only received it through, through teachings. But... A lot of queens are, are, are interested in finding their kingdom, their Boaz, their kingdom spouse. Well, keep, keep yourselves open. Absolutely. But renew your minds when it comes to what love is and what relationships are and what marriage is. Because as you can see, the world has no idea what relationships are and what they mean and what marriage truly means. They have desecrated that. Divorces going on a higher rate still. People don't even want to get married anymore. I can see why. Most people fall in love with the idea of each other. And when you get two broken people, well, that rope won't hold on for long. Broke cannot fix broke. Now, when God does a work in you, and he does a work in your kingdom spouse, and then he gets you together, you're still not perfect. But you're strong enough and cemented in the Lord that you will work through the chinks here and there. After all, you don't just marry the man or the woman. You marry the family. You marry the parents, your, your, your in-laws. 
It's like Dr. Miles Monroe said, it's two generations coming together and then some. Glory to God. So going back to that renewal of the mind, you see you have this rose-tinted idea of what love is because it comes from Disney and Hollywood because most of you grew up on that diet and it's on a steady diet of both and also TV. That's where you get most of your notions and ideas of romance and men. You have a very limited view of what men really are. Very limited idea. Which is why it's also very good to get into, find yourselves bona fide. I'm talking about, because not all of them are, by the way. Some of these coaches are just pickup artists. Find yourselves some good teachers to teach you about the relationships, about men, about, you know, um, grown boys, about all of that. Doc Reed is a really good one, by the way. Doc Reed. So just be careful. Tony Gaskins is another one. God bless him. Both. Just be careful. The, the amount of teachers that you accumulate for yourselves. My kings, that goes the same for you. Be careful. Don't get bitter if somebody broke your heart. You have no place. A chosen one has no place being bitter. There's no place for you in the bitterness. You're supposed to rise, ascend, and transcend. So you can help others do the same. Do you see how powerful we are, chosen ones? The soles of your feet are powerful because of the unction. Or because of the anointing. Renew your minds, my queens. What is love? What is marriage? What is truly taking care of your husband? What does this all mean? Educate yourselves. Get rid of the old garments. Get rid of this rose-tinted mentality of love. Marriage comes with hardships, and I've never been married, but I can tell. Especially when you're yoked up unevenly. The wrong person. I've seen that time and again. I'm surrounded by people who are yoked up unevenly. And they're paying consequences. You made the choice, however uneducated your choice was. So be careful. If you're in a single season, learn to appreciate and love the process of the single season. If you are married, or on the verge of getting married, learn to appreciate the season. You have to be happy where you're at. Because if you're looking for somebody else to bring you that happiness, to fulfill you, You'll, you won't find it in them. And that's why we crashed and we burned with the narcissist. And they were out looking. See, they're always, okay. They're always looking for the bright and shiny objects. They got, see, you, they, they got it wrong with you, says the Lord. There's gold. And then there's fool's gold. And if you look at fool's gold and gold, which one shines brighter? You see, they, they, they're out hunting for fool's gold. That's when they move from you, 24 karat gold, because they don't realize your worth, because what often happens is that God blinds them to your worth. Don't expect them to see your worth. But then they move on. They throw you into the pile and then they move on. And then they go to another bright and shining object. It's fool's gold. The Lord says, foolish things attract foolish things. 
They were fooled and now they get to live with that choice. You make them live with that choice, with that decision. And that goes for the, for the man who dumped you, not just the narcissist, for the woman who dumped you, for the other man. You make them live with that choice. That's what God does. God reminded me of when the spirit left Samson. The spirit didn't make a big commotion. He left quietly. And when Samson thought he could do it all over again and escape from his enemies, his irreverence brought him there, beloved. He had no reverence for the things of the Lord. He gave honey out of a lion's carcass to his mother and father. He preferred Philistine women. It's like every little thing that God said, don't do Samson, there he goes and does it. Oh, he was a chosen one too, by the way. Predestined. But you make the choice. And then what did he think? That he was going to easily escape from his enemies after his irreverence? His disobedience? The spirit left. The Lord says, because you walk in the spirit, because you are aligned in my spirit. You don't make a big commotion when people hurt you, when people betray you. You simply walk away and dust the dirt off your feet quietly. You don't make a noise. You make news. Glory to God. So the disciple of the light must be willing to step into the light, says the Lord, to have all of those dark areas examined and rooted out of you, all of that gunk rooted out of you. If you are to shine your light so bright in this world, if you are to disperse it, glory to God, all over this world, you have to be willing to be torn down yourself and be rebuilt. Glory to God. From the top up, from the dry bones up, says the Lord. I am resurrecting them in this season. The enemy won't know what hit him. And the Lord says, a lot of you chosen ones are coming from the bottom of the barrel. We're talking ghetto. You know how they look down on you because you were from the ghetto? From the ghetto, says the Lord. I've got chosen ones in the ghetto. Wasn't Jesus come? Didn't he come from the ghetto? Do not underestimate yourselves. Do not throw yourselves out just yet. They threw you out. Make them think that they have won. Fake. You, you, have, to, you have to fake this. Fake defeat. Because when you come around, just like Joseph, the enemy won't know what hit him. Work in silence. Whatever seasons you find yourselves in right now, beloved, work in silence. Don't tell people what you're doing. Work it in silence. Another thing the Lord was showing me is that he says, you have to be wise as a serpent. When a serpent is chasing, when a serpent is um, hunting prey, have you ever noticed how the serpent does it, how the lion does it? Wise as a serpent, beloved. Move under the, move below the radar. Yeah, the Lord uses the serpent as an example. Don't let the enemy fool you. Yeah, he may be the original serpent, but don't forget who created the creature itself, the animal itself, the Lord. And he gave the serpent her subtlety. Oh, glory to God. He gave that serpent her subtlety. Where did you think it came from, the enemy? See, the enemy uses the gifts that God gives to animals and men to use it for his kingdom. And that's what he did with that serpent. 
to make Adam hand over the keys to the kingdom to the serpent, the original serpent of old. So be like the serpent, says the Lord. In fact, I ask our Father in this moment to give us, Father, in the name of Jesus, give us wisdom like the serpent and cause us, Lord, to be harmless as a dove. We can be both in the name of Jesus. See how peculiar chosen ones are? We ask for these things. The world just wants to lounge around, go to work, and come back from work, and watch TV, watch a, watch a movie, and then go back to work, and go back into the rat maze, into the little hamster wheel, while we're hard at work trying to take over for our Father. We're like Pinky and the Brain. Well, more like the Brain, actually. You guys remember that cartoon, The Pinky and the Brain? Brain was always trying to take over the world. I don't know about you guys, but... I want to change the world for my father. But I need more. It can't just be me. And how are we going to do this? With your gifts. See, yes, it's important that you work this gift because this, this gift will work for you. It will, it will it, glory to God. This, you've got millions and millions inside of you, but don't just think about the money. Forget about the money, says the Lord. Think kingdom. Get ambitious about kingdom, not money. The money will come. The more you produce for the kingdom. Ooh, the kingdom. Mm, glory to God, it is powerful. And it is. It is here. It is in you. You have to be willing to look inside of you. Remember the 3D image. Look at your reflection. Look inside of you. It is in you. And bring it out. Honor our Father. But we need the wisdom of a serpent. So move in silence, beloved. All those, uh, those coaches that talk about don't tell people what you're doing, they're right. Don't tell them what you're doing. Don't tell them your plans. If you're waiting for people to applaud you when you haven't even started a business, a project, if you're waiting for their validation, let me give you the validation you need right now. I need you to tell yourselves, I am great. I am already successful with or without the euphoria of others. I don't need their euphoria. I believe it was Seneca who said, how did he say it? A little is enough for me, so is one and so is none. Do it for kingdom. Don't wait for the views on your YouTube videos to start coming in. Don't wait for the likes and the followings on, on Instagram. Don't count your worth by that. If, you're, if you've been thinking about starting a YouTube channel, this is your confirmation. Start it. Trust the Spirit will give you the content to deliver. Glory to God. He's always working. He's always giving ideas. He's like, a, he's like a factory. He's always he's always putting it out, putting it out, putting it out there, giving it to you. Holy Spirit, release ideas, business ideas, book ideas, movie ideas. We need more kingdom movie directors. Oh, I have been dying, beloved, for somebody to, I don't know, make movies based on the story of Joshua, the story of, and, and I'm not talking, okay, so we had that series, The Bible, back in like 2015, 2016. Oh, that wasn't enough for me. I need more of that. And not just that, I need more of the rest of the Bible. I need, I need, ep the Bible is epic. Why don't we have movie directors putting their money into this, into producing, I mean, look at the Ten Commandments. The movie, my goodness, I'm starving for those types of movie directors. I'm starving for Kingdom Haunts Zimmers. Glory to God with that music. Oh, I like, I, I like me some Hans Zimmer. Glory to God, he's inspired so many musicians. Like I'm trembling right now because I, I, want, I want it to happen now, but I know it's a process and it takes time. But this wave is coming. The kingdom renaissance is coming, beloved. 
God turned off the faucet so that the kingdom of darkness will no longer churn it out to advance the kingdom of darkness. Those, the followers of the kingdom of darkness, yeah, they're out there. You've heard the conspiracy theories. Now, I'm not even going to tap into that. I was in that. I was in. I was researching that for a very long time. I'm sick and done. I'm, I'm only about my father's business. 